Hello, everybody. In this talk, I will explain uh, primordial black holes as a candidate for dark matter and the mechanism for their formation. First, I will explain what I mean by primordial black holes and what's the difference between primordial black hole and a stellar black hole. And then I will explain about the properties of the primordial black holes and the mechanism that we can form them. I will focus especially on the inflationary models that they have the fluctuations, higher density fluctuations to form primordial black holes. And I will also focus on the new method called as the excursion set theory to which uh, we hope the results appear too soon as the mechanism for primordial black holes formation. And I will explain about the, the primordial black holes and the observational constant traits that we have on them as a candidate for dark matter. And at the end, I'm going to conclude. We know that there are many evidences for the dark matter, for example, the rotation curves of the stars and the galaxies and the lensing experiments, for example, the bullet cluster. And by these uh, observations, we know that any candidate for dark matter, if it's going to be in the form of the particle, should have different properties. For example, that particle should be stable, should be neutral in the sense that should not have the electromagnetic or the color chart it should be weakly interacting. And the most important, any candidate for dark matter should give us the right relic density. With these properties, we already have some candidates, for example, axion, estrile neutrinos, weakly interacting massive particles. However, for any of these candidates, we need something beyond the standard model of the particle physics. However, there is another candidate called primordial black holes. And for this uh, candidate, we don't need any uh, anything beyond the standard model of the particle physics and standard model of cosmology. So I'm going to focus on these candidates for, for dark matter. So what I mean by primordial black hole, we know that for any black hole formation, if it comes from the stellar class, we need uh, the evolution of the star at the end of the, its age, which is fake to its mass to convert a black hole. But in these black hole formations, uh, the mass of the black hole could not have any 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 mass. However, in the case of the primordial black holes, we just need the high density fluctuations to pass a threshold value that is uh, essential for the uh, for the black hole formation, and that density fluctuations to collapse to to form from the primordial black holes. So, in this sense, primordial black holes can have any mass ranges. So, what are the properties of the primordial black holes? First, the mass of the black hole is proportional to mass of the size of the horizon. And if we consider uh, the simple calculations, we can find that, uh, for example, that if a black hole forms 10 to the minus 20 seconds after the Big Bang, its mass is going to be of order 10 to the 15 grand. I'm going to explain why I'm using this normalization. Just keep in mind that one solar mass is of order 10 to the 30 gram. This means that if we have, for example, the black hole formations in the Planck scale, the mass of the black hole will be close to the mass of the Planck, which is 10 to the minus 5 gram. In the case of the uh, phase transitions in the early universe, for example, the cut scale, electric scale, and the QCD scale, we can also find more the black holes with different masses, which is related to the horizon mass in that scale. For example, in the case of the QCD scale, we can form the primordial black hole with mass close to the, to the solar mass. However, there is a minimum mass for, the, for, the, for a black hole formation because we know that if the black holes form before the inflation, they are going to be diluted. So if we assume that there is a radiation dominated EO after the inflation, we know that in that region, the T is proportional to the inverse of the time uh, square. So then if we get the really simple normalization as supposing that the temperature of the universe after the inflation is the gut scale, then the minimal mass of the black holes can form after the inflation is going to be one gram. So now the question is that how we can form the black holes of order of the minus five gram, which is going to answer this question later. So since primordial black holes are really tiny, that invokes Hopkins to study their um, quantum effects, and then he realized that the black holes are going to evaporate, and they are going to have a temperature with the, this temperature is proportional to the inverse of their masses. So this means that the black hole with ma higher masses is going to emit a lower or massless particles. So if we have, for example, a black hole of a mass of less than 10 to the 14 gram, these black holes could be able to emit hadrons. 
since primordial black holes evaporate, they, can, they are going to have a lifetime. So their lifetime is proportional to mass Q. Higher masses means the larger lifetime. For example, as a human being, if you convert to black hole, you will evaporate in 10 to minus 12 seconds. However, the black holes that they have mass over order of the 10 to the 15 gram and higher, they are going to have the lifetime, which is order of the age of the universe. So that's why I just use this normalization for the mass of the black hole. So this means that any black hole with mass larger than 10 to the 15 gram is going to be survived. So they could be a candidate for dark matter. You can see the other uh, lifetimes for the, for the other mass ranges too. So why primordial black holes are useful? So let's answer these questions by categorizing the primordial black holes based to the masses. If the black hole have mass less than 10 to the 15 grams, so since these black holes evaporate, so they are going to affect early universe, especially the BBN results. So we have really strong concentrates on these black holes. However, for the black holes with mass larger than 10 to the 15 grams, these are the ones that they could survive the evaporation. So they could be a candidate for dark matter and especially the cold dark matter since these black holes are heavy. And also, since the most of these black holes could form in the radiation dominated era, say they are going to be non-baryonic. So they are a good candidate for cold dark matter. However, the parameter density of the, these black holes could be maximum equal to the parameter density that we have for, for cold dark matter by observations. So the black holes that they can for, uh, evaporate not, they could affect, uh, for example, the cosmic rays from our galaxy and the other galaxies. However, we know that uh, at least there are some ideas saying that the black hole could not evaporate completely. So you're going to have a relic, which is order of the Planck mass, which is 10 to the minus five gram. These relics also, they could pan candidate for dark matter. But however, in this talk, I'm not interested in these black holes. So since black holes are uh, useful, now the question is that how we can form them. So for forming any compact object, you need, to, you need an area to be pressureless at least. So if you have the soft equation of the state, for example, in the phase transitions that happens in the early universe, we can form primordial black holes. There are also other mechanisms like bubble collisions, because we know that in, in the early universe bubbles can form. So if they collide, they can form primordial black holes. But this one is really high, really fine tuned because the rate of the bubble collisions be close to the rate of the expansion of the universe. Hub. Otherwise, the bubbles cannot, cannot see each other to, to collide. There are also other ideas like the collapse of the cosmic loops, but I'm interested in the fluctuations that arise by the inflations. So these high density fluctuations, they could collapse to form primordial black holes if this, uh, they pass a specific threshold value, which is going to explain them. There is a famous formalism called Preston's formalism, which uh, introduced by President Shesha in 1972 to explain that how we can form compact objects by the high density fluctuations that we have. So if we have density perturbations, which is fed to the, to the, to the position, and if they, these uh, perturbations, they pass a threshold value, the regions that they pass the threshold, they will have a chance to collapse. So the, this threshold value is really important, which is really different for, the, for different compact objects, which I'm going to explain what's that for primordial black holes. This formalism tells you that if the density perturbations are going to, to be Gaussian, the fractions of the universe to be to collapse for, to the masses larger or equal to m is given by this uh, integration of the probability distribution function if this uh, PDF passes the threshold value. For the case of the black holes, we almost know that, that this threshold value is 0.4 and that that's also under debate. So in this equation, P, PDF, is the Gaussian distribution. And this Gaussian distribution, we have delta, which is the, den the, per the density contrast. And the square of the density contrast is going to give us the power spectrum of the density perturbation. And the power spectrum of the density perturbation is related to power spectrum of the curvature perturbation. Here, W is the equation of the state. And since we are interested in the black holes formation in the radiation dominated era, the value is going to be one third. However, for black holes formation, the scale should, should, uh, is, should come inside the horizon. So the wave number k is going to be equal to AH, which A is the scale factor and H is the Hubble parameter. So that's where the, the effect of the com inflation comes. If we suppose that the curvature perturbation is coming by the inflation, we know that the relations of the curvature perturbation with respect to the scale is in the form of the power law from the spectral index n. However, 
we should smooth the density perturbation. So we are going to get the variance by smoothing the density perturbation using the window function W. And then in most cases, people use a Gaussian uh, window function. And we know that the, the whole mass of the black, the particle horizon is not going to convert to a black hole. So we need the parameter of the gamma, which is related to the equation of the state. So if you re replace W one third, you are going to see that in the radiation dominated era, only the 20 persons of the horizon mass is going to convert to black hole. However, in this equation, we see that the left-hand side is a function of the mass, but the right-hand side, everything is a function of the scale. So we should find a relation between the mass of the black hole and the scale. And in the radiation-dominated era, you are going to find that m is proportional to the r squared instead of r cubed. So g star is here, is here is the number of the relativistic degrees of the freedom where the black holes are going to form. So everything is in hand for finding the fractions of the regions that they are going to convert to a black hole with respect to the with respect to the masses. The only free parameter is the spec the spectrum index. So let's see what we are going what we are going to have. These calculations shows you that the fraction, if you consider the, the Gaussian distribution function, is going to be given by the error function, which is really decreasing function and then it's related to the threshold and also the variance of the perturbation. The, the variance is also related to the scale. So this uh, plot giving us F with respect to the mass of the black hole in the logarithmic scale. However, we already know that since we are interested in the black holes uh, to be a candidate for dark matter, so I'm interested in the black holes to, to, to have mass larger than 10 to the 15 gram. These calculations shows you that if I fix the value of the black holes of order of the 10 to the 15 gram by the observational concentrates that I'm going to show you later, the, the free parameter that we have was the spectral index should be at least one point uh, for, which is much higher than the value of the power the spectral index that we already have by the CMB. If you convert this spectral index to the, to the power spectrum, this means that the, the power spectrum will be of order of 10 to the minus, uh, minus two. So this means that the, the power spectrum that you need in the scale of the black hole formation, which is much, uh, the, the, the wave number is much larger than the, the CMB or large scale spectral uh, observation is going to be much higher. Let's see what we have by the, by the, by the observation. This plot shows you the power spectrum with respect to the scale. And we know that by the CMB and large scale structure, we are almost uh, surveying the scales of order of 10 to the minus four up to the close to one inverse megaparsec. And in this scale, the value of the perturbation is of order of 10 to the minus five. However, in the scale of the black hole formation, which is much lower than the scale of the CMB, this means that the wave number is higher, the value of the power spectrum should be much larger. So I'm just giving you the results of the observations that we have by applying for the power spectrum in the scale of the pivot scale should be of order of the 10 to the minus nine, and the spectral index should be close to the one, but less than one. But that scale, also, that spectral index, index also is scale dependent. So now the question is that, how we can have that really high power in the scales that relate to the scale of the black hole to form them? Let's see, and also to fulfill the results of the observations that we have. So I'm going to focus in uh, two specific inflation models, especially one of them is the running mass inflation model because it's almost one inflation model that you, that's it's safe for say to form in the prime order black holes. In these uh, inflation models that the potential is coming by a constant potential. However, the mass of the inflaton here is going to be scale, to be scale dependent, to be, is going to be depend on the, on the, on the inflaton field. That's why we call it the running mass. So the, the, the derivative of the mass of the inflaton is going to be different with, with respect to its coupling to the to supersymmetric particles. So you can do the Taylor expansions of the mass of the inflaton, but I'm not going to go to the details. However, with this uh, potential, you can find the spectral index uh, and also the other parameters of the uh, the, the, the change of the spectral index with respect to the scale, which we call it uh, running, and also the running of the running spectral index. This plot shows you that with respect, if you fix the value of the spectral index in the pivot scale, which we know by already by the observation, which is the order of the uh, 0.9, you will be able to find the value of the spectral index by fixing the values of the running and the running of the spectral index in the observational scale to be larger than 1.3. However, you see that the value of the spectral index even can reach the value of the tree. 
So then we should be careful in this model to stop the inflation, not to overproduce the black holes. Otherwise, we are going to overclose our universe. So this uh, inflation model is one of the special ones that they can form uh, primordial black holes. Another inflation model is the, the coupled inflation model in a sense that we have also inflaton field and also another gauge field. However, the potential of the discate gauge field should be negligible. However, there's interaction between the inflaton and also the gauge field, which is coming by this relation. You can find that there is a parameter of the particle production in this gauge particle production, which is related to the alpha, which is the coupling of the inflaton and also gauge field, and then the running of the inflaton field, the change of the inflaton with respect to the time, and also F is the decay constant of this, uh, uh, this gauge field. These uh, observations, uh, this plot shows you the power spectrum with respect to this uh, particle production rate, which I call it Kc. And this shows you that this 10 to the minus 9 is the, the value of the power spectrum that we have by observation. However, 10 to the minus uh, 2 or 3 is the value that we need for primary the black hole formation. This shows you that if the Kc the going to be close to the 1, you can pass the value that you need for the, for the, spec, for the, for the power spectrum to form primordial black holes. So in this specific inflation model, when you have the gauge production, you will be able also to form primordial black holes. However, all these inflation models are really model independent, model dependent in a sense that you should fix the values of the parameters of the model with respect to the observations that you have for the, for the, for the value of the spectral index and then the power spectrum. So is there any another method to form primordial black holes model independently? We are already working on the extrusion set theory, which is really famous method to form the for, for to forming the halos. And in this method, you consider the trajectories that they are going to pass a threshold value. The, the point is that you know that the scale that's going to collapse to form a compact object. However, it's possible that inside that uh, scale, you are going to have a small also halos. So for solving the problem of the cloud in cloud or halo in halo problem of the pressure deformism, this extrusion set theory uh, could solve that, that problem by removing the cloud in cloud problem. But however, in this um, uh, method, exclusion set theory, you have the density perturbation with respect to the variance, which is uh, coming by the S, and you form the trajectories and you, you are going to count the, the compact objects if the trajectory of the these perturbation pass the threshold for, uh, value, which is specific for any compact object, in our case, primordial black holes. So, but the point is that since S is related to, to, to the R, to the scale of the, form, uh, the compact object formation, and R is related to the mass, this means that any trajectory that is going to be to pass uh, in any specific S is going to give you a compact object with a specific R and also with a specific mass. That's different by the halo formation in the exclusion set theory. In, in the exclusion set theory method for the halos, you consider the different uh, threshold value in different redshifts. However, in the black holes uh, formation, we don't consider different uh, threshold for different, uh, for different uh, uh, redshifts. That's why it's possible to form primordial black holes in the exclusion set method. And we hope that the results of the, these uh, studies appear too soon. And here I'm showing you that the fraction of the black holes formation with, with the mass, which is coming by the, by the LIGO and VIRGO masses, because we know that the detections of the LIGO and VIRGO shows that the black holes should have the masses close to the solar masses. So here we, we are showing that it's possible in this method, the exclusion set method, to form primordial black holes of order of the 10 to the minus 2 or minus 3, which is coming by the, by the observations of the live and vehicle. Let's talk a, bit, a little bit about the observations that we already have. I told you that the black holes, that they have mass less than 10 to the 15 gram, they are going to affect the BBN, so we have really uh, strong concentrates on them. However, the, the ones that they don't evaporate, they, uh, they have uh, looser masses. So let's go to the observations that they are a bit more uh, 
uh, more up to date. For example, in this one, you see these uh, green regions are the observations of the micro lensing. And I'm also I'm interested in these uh, dots here, which is coming by the LIGO and MIGO observations that tells you that the fractions of the black holes, that the primordial black holes, that they could be in the form of the cold dark matter, could be of order of the 10 to the minus 3 if you have uh, masses close to the, to the solar masses. So let's come back to the exclusion set method. We also showed that in exclusion set method, it's possible to find the fractions of the primordial black holes of order of the 10 to the minus 2 or 10 to the minus 3. So in this method, we can form primordial black holes. So let me conclude. I, I showed you that the fluctuation which arise at inflation are the most likely source of the primordial black holes. And however, the spectral index at the scale of the primordial black holes formation should be at least 1.4. If you consider Gaussian perturbations, you can also consider non-Gaussian perturbations, which I didn't talk about that. We can also form primordial black holes in the exclusion set uh, method. And the good point is that in this method, you can form primordial black holes with any masses. But in the case of the inflationary models, it's really difficult to form the black holes with different, in with different masses. So let me just uh, show you the last slide, emphasizing that the primordial black holes are born, they aren't made. However, the black holes are made, but they aren't born. So thank you for your attention.